Islam was born with the seed of civil war, decries German Egyptian scholar. In an interview with Brother Ranchid, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that, Brother Rankin, a Moroccan Christian televangelist, German Egyptian academic and political science, Hamid Abdel Samad, declared that Islam was distorted from the beginning and was, quote, born with the seeds of civil war. He argues that Islam was already perverted since it was founded in 610 AD and that the seeds of civil war were planted in Islam. Quote, it put forward great slogans, but failed to come up with a program for coexistence between nations, Abdul Samad, uh, Abdul Samad said in the interview. He also argued that implementing the Sharia law in nations such as Afghanistan, Iran, and areas under the control of Boko Haram and ISIS did not develop ideal societies, and that Gulf states, once the champions of Sharia, have primarily abandoned Sharia law since it did not serve their economic interests. Quote, Islam and its Sharia are dwindling, Abdul Samad asserted. Quote, show me an Islamic countries that are not using usurious banks. What Islamic countries are not using camera lenses? Didn't they say that photography is haram according to Sharia? Everyone is filming. Even the Salafis are posting videos on TikTok. <laughs> he added. Both Hamad Abdul Samad and Brother Ranchid are ex-Muslims and public critics of Islam. Mm -hmm. What does it mean exactly by seeds of civil war? What is that exactly? What, what is it referring to? So basically, I believe he's either referring to the Sunni Shia schism that started even before the Prophet Muhammad died. And then it contextually, it seems that he's commenting on the fact that there is a lack of ability to coexist with other nations or other ideologies. Hmm. 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 Somebody could uh, challenge that by saying, if he has seeds of civil war, how do we have um, stand? You know, uh, after the expansion of Islam we have had very stable, lasting Islamic empires um, that were prosperous for a very long time. Like we had the Abbasid dynasty, and they were not, they did not have a civil war. They were Islamic. They were mm -hmm. quite stable. So mm -hmm. how would they respond to that? Well, that's a good question. I don't know because the full interview, which I wish I could watch, is in Arabic. And I do not understand Arabic. So I cannot give you any better uh, steel man to what his position is. <laughs> but yeah. I wanted to cover this because I saw um, like clips of this conversation. They were translated and put on memory. And I'm frankly can be skeptical of memory because they are like an Israeli organization seemingly primarily and solely set out to show that the entire world is trying to nuke Israel. I mean, there are people genuinely trying to do that. But um, I, 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 then I went down a rabbit hole. Not us, hole. YouTube. Not us. Not us. YouTube. Not us. 100% not us. 100% not us. We're talking about other people. Um, but I thought his comments were very interesting. And then I started to go on a deep dive about the two guys who were having this conversation. And I thought it was really interesting. So the host of the show is, uh, they both are sons of imams. And the host of the show is Moroccan. And then he became a Christian. And then he had to leave Morocco because of his... Um, he originally started studying Christianity to try to disprove it, and then he ended up converting. And then he had to leave because of his activities as a Christian. And then similarly, um, Hamad Abdul Samad was also the son of an imam, and then he became an ex-Muslim atheist. And he now lives in Germany because he can't have this kind of activity in Egypt, where he has a channel called Box of Islam where he talks about these issues and Islamic criticism in Arabic. And he recently, I don't know about recently, but he, his only book that's been translated into English is called Islamic Fascism. And um, 
basically his whole premise is that Islam is itself actually a fascist ideology with the dress up of a religion. Um, and I just found this whole conversation really interesting. Like, I'll give you another quote from this conversation. He said, can they open slave markets and sell slaves there today? The Sharia has dwindled and all that is left from it are the hijab and sex. So what he's saying basically is that all these things surrounding Sharia have been essentially thrown out because they're not actually um, in economic best interest to have all these things. Like it's not in our economics to be selling slaves in a market. We can't be amputating hands in the same way because it just, it, we can't tolerate that from an, an economic perspective. So he's saying that all that remains of the Sharia in reality is a control over women and control of the private sphere in regards to hijab and sex. And I thought that was an interesting perspective. What do you think of that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could be picky and put my uh, Muslim reformist hat on. Yes, please. <laughs> oh, you want me to do that? Okay, okay. It might, it might be annoying um, to a lot of people <laughs> in Russia. I mean, be like, well, that is one of your interpretation of Islam, okay? Mm -hmm. You are just coming up with the worst interpretation of Islam. For example, this whole slavery thing, you know, you act like, okay, Islam is for slavery. Whereas Muhammad's teaching was always encouraging people to free their slaves. And if you look at the constant insistence of Muhammad's teaching on freeing slaves, you can see that the eventual goal was that to abolish slavery as a whole. So that interpretation of Islam would say like, no, you know, slavery is not a foundational part of Islam. In fact, it was a pretty unique thing that Muhammad was constantly suggesting people to free their slaves at this time. So how would you respond to that? Hmm? Right, that is annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But what do you think about his point that the only thing that Sharia has dwindled and all that is left is hijab and sex? All that is left is hijab and sex? In terms of what the we Sharia have sex outside of Islam. Control for. Oh, okay. Um, well, I mean, what are you talking? We have Islamic based finance. Uh, we have a lot of Islamic things that are not hijab and sex. Like, for example, the 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 ban on um, Salafis for not not listening to music. How is that hijab and sex? Or no, no, you saying that even the Salafis are using TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Well, look, for example, fasting in Ramadan. How is that hijab and sex? The zakat, the khums and zakat, how is that? I think he's six? talking about on a nation, on a nation level, oh. what is actually used in practice. Like everything would... else he's arguing is most of everything else is dropped for convenience and self-enlightened interest. But what can they, they can retain control over is these two I things. mean, back in Iran, they're executing people for waging war against a god. That's neither his job or sex. Yeah, but he gave Iran as an example of a nation that oh. has failed to produce an ideal society. So his whole argument is in the places that do implement the Sharia, we see these awful where? societies. For, for example, like where? where did he implement? gives the example of uh, ISIS and Mo uh, Mosul, Boko Haram, Iran, and okay. Afghanistan. Those are the specific examples he gives. Okay, in all those countries, Islam does a lot more than regulating hijab and sex. No, Armin, that's the whole point. Mm. He's saying in those places where they fully implement the Sharia or do it to the major extent, we see a, a not ideal society. He's saying okay. in these other places, mm. all that remains is hijab and sex. Like where? Like the Gulf states is primarily what he's referring to in his statement. Oh, the Gulf states. Um, the Gulf states, Islam is only bad hijab and sex. So can I, uh, so eating during Ramadan in public, that's okay? Well, definitely not in Morocco, but that's not a Gulf state. Yeah. I I, I don't know. I, I, I don't like coming out with like 
this reductionist views the coming up with blanket mm-hmm. statements for entire countries, you know. So I think sometimes it's a little bit more complicated than that. I could mm-hmm. I could, I could, I could, pick, I could poke holes at all these claims forever. Well, Prometheus I, is bringing up the example of uh, inheritance law. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, or child marriages, right? Oh, that's it. That is sex. Never mind. Yeah, unfortunately, well, yes, that's exactly what it is. Um. And Secular Rarity is saying that we need to get Armin a hat that says Reform is Muslim. That would actually be pretty funny. I want to have multiple hats, okay? I want to have a Reformist Muslim hat and a Fundamentalist Muslim hat. And I could just, like, keep switching it as I'm talking. During, oh, uh, my God. And then we'll remember we used to have tinfoil hats that we would wear. We need to bring that back. We used to have tinfoil hats. Yeah, we used to have tinfoil hats. <laughs> Especially, specifically for our Hindutva conspiracy segments. <laughs> you know, okay, so here's here's what I don't, the reason why I'm poking holes at this whole claim, okay? I sometimes think that certain lines are put out there because there's an audience for it not necessarily because it's the most accurate way of describing things do you know what i mean oh that's a fact of life yeah 100 percent. i know i know so we have to be careful like are we going to be like because as evil as islam is usually you can come up with something as complicated as any um you know anything that affects society in such a complicated way mm-hmm. you know i don't think like you could come up with blanket statements that doesn't take into account different variables like at least you could say mostly or many times but when you come up with absolute statements about something so um that is impacted by so many different variables i feel like are you actually being intellectually honest Mm -hmm. or are you thinking like there's a demand for a line like this so i'm gonna go with it do you know what i mean yeah so that's i I see it all the time yeah so i'm just being skeptical okay no yeah i think no you're totally right too sasan is saying i think he's saying that in the contemporary world the islamic model of the world is dysfunctional it doesn't meet the needs of modern civilization yeah that's essentially the point he's getting at well Um, yeah i mean but sasan you're saying it better you're saying it in a in a i mean you the way you're saying it sounds better to me than the way that you know and to be fair what was available to me in english was the parts of like an over hour long conversation that were translated by memory okay you know okay. the memory institute so there probably Never is a lot more context and that i'm that just isn't available to me and i wish i understood arabic because i'd be very curious in watching the show mm-hmm. that he has with this guy and yeah. um people criticize memory for like you know cutting people out of context and da 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 so you know that's all important context as a viewer um which is partially what makes memory like low key hilarious. But um <laughs> there's so many good memory memes too. Oh my god. It, uh memory lane. Um so yeah, and sure, yeah, he's doing the link. That that part is I mean, I don't want to be too, I don't want to be too picky, okay? No, like I don't want to be that annoying guy that is always picky about everything. The Sharia is doing the link. That's brand pretty... though. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. Um, right. and, gonna... but it's not dwindling. Do not forget guys. It's actually not dwindling because Harish has correctly identified oh. that Armin is actually an Islamic apologist disguised as an atheist. And his only goal is to make a dimmy out of you. So yes, 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 yes. You heard it here first. Today. If you're and not too careful. Now that Harish has exposed us, we can all pack up and go home. <laughs> I mean, Dimmy would be too good for you guys. If I'm lucky, I would make sex slaves out of all of you. Dimmy <laughs> is too high level. <laughs> God. Dimmy, Dimmy uh, is a protected class in Islam, okay? Dimmy, like, you think Dimmy is a bad thing? Dimmy is actually good. You pay, you might be paying higher taxes, okay? But as a Dimmy, you get to enjoy the protection of our Islamic, um, you know, Islamic power, right? And you don't even have to go to war. 
you will be lucky to be a demi. Okay? <laughs> you should you should pray I don't make you a, into a sex slave. Oh. I mean, some of you might like, actually, I don't know if, if I should. Some of you might pray Armin, that stop. I do. Some stop. of you might pray that I do turn you into a sex slave. So I don't stop. know if that's about <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah. and Muhammad is identifying correctly that these are not his only statements. He has hundreds of hours of online content on his channel. Okay. So go check it yeah. out. If you yes, yes, yes. understand Arabic, which unfortunately I do not because I want to go watch this content, but, um, I believe his channel is called box of Islam. Uh, Wait, see, I, I knew I was right. I knew, I knew I am music guy gets in line for bringing music a guy. <laughs> don't encourage him. He's <laughs> These statements, he's risking it all. Yes. <laughs> See, people, people. This is the customers. Okay. Perspective. Yeah. Anyways, you know, we could we can actually do a we could do a complete spin on Islam and make it all kinky. I'm like, people just got that people got Islam wrong. It was just it was just being sex positive and kinky. <laughs> uh, this, whole, <laughs> this is like a whole new interpretation of Islam. <laughs> Mufti Abu Leith actually has a video on his YouTube channel about if it's oh, wow. halal for couples to do like kinky stuff together, and it was actually like very sex positive. I was like into it. Yeah, <laughs> she's like, where does like Allah say that like her wife cannot be doing the 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 for her husband? I was like, ooh. <laughs> This is not how I expected this conversation to go. <laughs> you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.